unearthing the first archaic humans. Just half a century ago, the discovery and naming of Homo habilis by Louis Leakey and his colleagues changed the picture of our ancestry tree. But ever since the name was first announced, it has come with a bit of controversy. In today's video, we'll be looking at Homo habilis, a species that has divided the opinions of many scientists on whether or not they were the direct human ancestors. Stay with us as we talk about their discovery, what they look like, their society, their technology, and of course, the debate. Have you ever hunted for hidden treasure or fossils? Maybe at the beach or in your backyard? Now imagine traveling as far away as Africa to search for those treasures. Well, back in 1960, a team of scientists led by Louis and Mary Leakey did just that. And on their trip, they found the fossilized bones of a creature that was part human, part ape. The scientists were digging for fossils in Tanzania when they found the remains of a species of early humans that they had never seen before. This type specimen, OH7, they nicknamed Johnny's Child. Because this early human had a combination of features different from those seen in Australopithecus, Louis Leakey, South African scientist Philip Tobias, and British scientist John Napier declared these fossils a whole new species and called them Homo habilis because they suspected it was a slightly larger-brained early human that made the thousands of stone tools found at Olduvai Gorge. The announcement was a turning point in paleoanthropology. It shifted the search for the first humans from Asia to Africa and began a controversy that endures to this day. But before we delve into the heated debate, let's look at the meaning of the name. The first part of the name, Homo, refers to their genus which is a system that scientists use to classify living things. The genus Homo is used to describe human-like creatures, including modern humans like us. The word habilis is based on a Latin word meaning handy or skillful. The species is therefore known as handy man because stone tools were found near its fossil remains. And it is assumed that species had developed the ability to modify stone into a variety of different tools. Now, let's talk about what the species looked like. If Homo habilis were to walk into your neighborhood today, it would not look like any human you've ever seen. They were short by today's standards. The adults were the size of modern day kids, standing around four feet, five inches tall, around 135 centimeters, and weighing around 70 pounds, 32 kilograms. The body size and shape were similar to those of Australopithecines, with females growing to around 110 centimeters and males to around 130 centimeters in height. Their brains average 610 cubic centimeters in size, representing 1.7% of their body weight. This is a significant increase compared to Australopithecines' brains. Their skulls had become fuller and more rounded due to the expansion of the brain. Their face had a small arch brow ridge and were smaller and shorter than those of earlier ancestors. Their jaws were smaller than those found in the earlier Australopithecines, and their teeth were arranged in a more rounded arc, like those of modern humans. The teeth had become smaller and more human-like, although the incisors were still relatively large. Features of the leg and foot bones indicated the species walked on two legs. Their legs were relatively short, providing the species with arm and leg proportions that were relatively ape-like and similar to those of the Australopithecines. Their finger bones were slightly curved and intermediate between quadrupedial apes' curved finger bones and modern humans' straight finger bones. Finally, their finger bone proportions suggest a human-like ability to form a precision grip. What about the society lived in, you may be wondering? Typically, Homo erectus is considered to have been the first human to have lived in a monogamous society, and all preceding hominins were polygamous. The behavior of early Homo, including Homo habilis, is sometimes modeled on that of savanna chimps and baboons. These communities consist of several males, as opposed to a harem society, in order to defend the group from the dangerous and exposed habitat, sometimes engaging in a group display of throwing sticks and stones against enemies and predators. Homo habilis and the contemporary hominins were likely predated by other large carnivores of the time, such as in Olduvai Gorge, the hunting hyena, Chasmoporthetes natidula, 
and the saber-toothed cats, Dinophelis and Megantarion. In 1993, American paleoanthropologist Leslie C. Elio and British evolutionary psychologist Robin Dunbar established that Homo habilis group size ranged from 70 to 85 members on the upper end of chimp and baboon size, based on trends seen in neocortex size and group size in modern non-human primates. Fun fact, Homo habilis coexisted with other Homo-like bipedial primates, such as Paranthropus boisei, some of which prospered for many millennia. However, Homo habilis, possibly because of its early tool innovation and a less specialized diet, became the precursor of an entire line of new species. In contrast, Paranthropus boisei disappeared from the fossil record. Homo habilis may also have coexisted with Homo erectus in Africa for 500,000 years. Now, let's talk about the technology. This human ancestor might have been the first to create stone tools, showing that they were thinking of new ways and finding different methods to survive. Around 2.6 million years ago, they started making basic stone tools. These tools included simple choppers, core tools, and smaller pieces used as scrapers. This kind of tool making is known as Mode 1 technology and are called Old One Stone Tools because they were first found in Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania, East Africa. Before this, our ancestors probably used sticks and unshaped stones. The Old One Tools had cutting edges made by hitting one stone with another to break off pieces, though it's still not clear who exactly made these first stone tools. And what about the big debate? Was Homo habilis our direct human ancestor? Well, Homo habilis has often been thought to be the ancestor of Homo ergaster, the working man, an ancestor of Homo erectus. Some people believe that Homo habilis was actually a mix of fossils from two other species, Australopithecus and Homo. However, others think that Homo habilis and Homo erectus, other early human species, were two different branches that came from the same ancestor, rather than Homo erectus evolving directly from Homo habilis. To support the idea that the Homo habilis fossils found in Olduvai Gorge were truly part of the Homo group, researchers named Leaky, Tobias and Napier studied their teeth and jaws. They found that these features were more similar to Homo erectus and less primitive compared to those of Australopithecus africanus, another early human species. They also found parts of skulls. Although these skulls had smaller brains compared to any known Homo erectus skulls, their brains were slightly larger than those of the smaller brain species, Australopithecus africanus. Additionally, they discovered a partial hand skeleton and stone tools nearby. This evidence led to the belief that Homo habilis was an ancestor of modern humans. The idea was that Homo habilis evolved into Homo erectus, which then evolved into Homo sapiens, our species. However, in the 1990s, scientists began to question this theory due to the small size of the Homo habilis body parts that were found. This doubt grew, especially after the discovery of the small OH-62 skeleton by Tim White and Donald Johnson at Olduvai in 1986. The skeleton was fragmented, but clearly showed that Homo habilis had a smaller body size. Around the same time, a researcher named Bernard Wood started suggesting that the biggest and most complete skull thought to be from Homo habilis known as the KNM ER 1470 skull, found in Kaboifora, Kenya, should actually be classified as belonging to a completely different species, named Homo rudolfensis. Because of this new perspective and other findings, many scientists began to rethink their views. They started considering the possibility that Homo habilis might be more similar to the Australopithecus species than previously thought. This debate continues following the discovery of skulls at Dimanisi in the Republic of Georgia. Two of the skulls are very similar to the species Homo ergaster, but one appears to have features intermediate between Homo habilis and Homo ergaster and may represent a link between these two species. If so, Homo habilis may be a direct ancestor of modern humans, or they both evolved from a yet undiscovered species. So after looking at all the fossils we found over the last 50 years and using all sorts of scientific methods, we still aren't totally sure where Homo habilis really comes from. It's tricky 
because their features show a mix of traits seen in earlier and later Homo species, making it difficult to pinpoint their exact place in the evolutionary tree. It's a bit of a mystery, but that's what makes it so interesting.